homework time. Yes, happy, happy, happy. Homework time is here yet again. Let us start in the customary manner, jotting our name down at the top of the paper. I'll write my name, you write yours, and let's both write today's date. I will write today, you write the actual date, where and when you are in this wonderful world of ours. Instructions, draw and label a tape diagram to show the following are true. Now, this is a good example, one of those days when I'm glad you're here with me, because this would be tricky, um, and this is not something that we learned when we were doing fractions when we were youngins. Okay, so here's a nice little tape diagram, right? And so what I want to draw to start with is just eight thirds. Now, forget about drawing fractions in the usual way. So in this rectangle, I want to create eight partitions. So I'll draw seven reasonably equally spaced lines. So one, two, three, four, five, oops, six, seven. Well, those are reasonably equally spaced. And now each of these is one third, okay? And so let's take a moment and do that. We'll label them all one third. And so this is how we're drawing eight thirds. I know, right? If, if you asked your, your uncle, he'd be like, what? That's not how we did it. Okay, so now I'm going to have four groups of two thirds. That's what the four times two thirds means. So look, here's two thirds. Here's two thirds. Ooh, that's not so nice. Here's two thirds. And here's two thirds. So I have one, two, three, four times I have two thirds. And so I'm actually going to write two thirds, two thirds, two thirds. Yeah, they just have us doing a lot of kind of busy work on this one. But it does help you to see what you're doing when you're um, multiplying fractions. And see, so this is the same as four times two thirds. There we are. That's it. This shows that four times two thirds is the same as four times two thirds. There we go. All right, and so same idea here on the eighths. Go ahead and draw. Now I need 15 eighths, so I need to make this at least a little bit longer and make my partitions a little bit smaller. So I need to draw 14 lines in here. This is going to tax even my abilities. All right, let's give it a shot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And now here comes the fun, y'all. I know, I wish they hadn't given us 15. It's a bit much, so... <coughs> uh, Eureka's there. When you revise this one, 15, this is a bit cumbersome, okay? It's just a lot of busy work here. So each of these is one-eighth. And yes, this is what I'm griping about. It's, but let's love the process. Is that every one of these is one-eighth. So we have 15 eighths. And each of these needs to be lovingly handcraftedly labeled as one eighth. Oh, it's so beautiful, isn't it? One eighth, one eighth, one eighth. Ah, ah, there we go, did it. And so I have three groups of five eighths. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, okay. One, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. And so I have three groups now of five. E, I, G, H, T, H, S, eighths, five, eighths here, and five, eighths. Here, and now this tape diagram does indeed show that three times five eighths, 
is 15 eighths, and also that 3 times 5 eighths is likewise 15 eighths. Whew! Doggy, so let's go on. Well, you and I and your Uncle Irv, all of us, will be glad to hear that these are much simpler. <whistles> yeah. So, look, all we're going to do here is write the expression unit form to solve, which simply means they want to accentuate that we're talking about when we, when we do 10 times 2 fifths. Basically, the whole idea is that, look, you're not messing with the 5. You're not messing with the denominator, and writing it in unit form demonstrates why. Okay, so I can write this as 10 times 2. We'll think about fifths. Just think about fifths as an object. Um, we'll call it fits. Your brother had 10 times 2 fits in the toy store. Okay, he had 20 fits. Poor kid. Just buy him a toy already. No tone. You'll spoil him. Okay, so the idea is when you write it out with the word fifths, you're more able to see, oh, okay, this is 20 fifths. Because, of course, the most common error here is to write this as to multiply the 10 times the 2 and the 5 here by a numerator and denominator, and up with 20 fiftieths, which is wrong. Uh, so the actual answer here will be 20, as we wrote out in unit form, fifths. That's how these are done. Pretty straightforward. So let's cruise through them here now. So we're going to do 3 times 5, 6, which is, well, 3 times 5 is? 15, and what we're talking about, Ed, we're talking about 6. So that's what I'll write for my answer. 15, 6. All right, and then same thing here. We're going to do 9 times 4, and we're talking about ninths. So I'm going to write that out in unit form. 9 times 4, you know that one? You did a 9 trick there. Okay, yep. 36, and we're talking about ninths. You see how this shows you what to do? It's a pretty good one here. This is good. So it's 36 ninths. We're just cruising on through right now. And then lastly here, it is 7 times 3, and we're talking about fourths. Well, 7 times 3 is 21. Good. And we're still talking about fourths. So our final answer here is 21 fourths. Hey, wasn't that nice and easy? Boom! Let's keep cruising. I like this pace. And here in number three, we see we have just some multiplication of fractions practice. And I tell you, we're going to kind of cruise through there. I'm going to assume you know your multiplication facts and how to do this. So this is what it looks like. This is what they're truly looking for here, is that you rewrite this first in this form as six times three over four. See, so this way you're certain that you're not uh, involving the denominator in the multiplication. And of course, that will give you simply 18 fourths. And we are merely to solve here. We are not to uh, convert the improper fractions to mixed numbers. So, boom, A is done. That's it. And so this one we'd write as 7 times 5 eighths. 7 times 5, you got it, 35. And we're still talking about eighths. Told you this was going to be quick. Did I tell you? Well, I'm telling you now. 13 times 2, and we're talking about thirds. 13 times 2, yeah, double it. 13 and 13, 26. And we're still talking about thirds. Same thing here. 18 times 2, can you double 18? Add 18 and 18, and we're talking about thirds. That's right, 36 thirds. And now here, 14 times 7, we're talking about tenths, Ooh, equal sign, and that equals what? Well, here's how I do this one. I do it backwards. I do 7 times 10 is 70. Hold on to that, 70. 7 times 4 is 28. Can I add 70 and 28 in my head? It's 98. There we go. If you, if you have to or want to, though, you can write it out separately, but that's how you do it in your head. And look, they're giving us the same fact here, 7 times 14. Um, so, just reversed. So, 7 times 14, and now we're talking about hundredths. So, it's still 98, but now it's hundredths. Look how we cruising through, yo! Moving on. And as is often their want, here in Eureka Land, we cap off a 
quick night's homework with a little word problem. Don't worry, this one's pretty straightforward. Mrs. Smith, bless her heart, bought some orange juice. Go, Miss Smith. Each member of her family drank two-thirds a cup for breakfast. There are five people in her family. Now, sometimes those wordings can be a little confusing, but we are to safely assume here that she is a member of the family. So when it says there are five people in her family, we're going to assume that includes Mrs. Smith. For example, if I said, you know, there are this many people in my family, I would be including myself, right? I wouldn't say, oh, plus me. Um, or I would have to specify that. So we're assuming five includes Miss Smith. I mention this because you got to watch that. Sometimes they do uh, try to trip you up on that. So five people drinking two thirds a cup. How many cups did they drink in all? Look, let's let's watch, <coughs> watch how easy this tape diagram is here. We got five people, right? So we'll draw four lines here. We have to redraw right. Yeah, don't don't try to skimp on me now. Two, three, four. Wow, those are not too evenly spaced. But each of these is two-thirds, right? Two-thirds of a cup of orange juice. She's like rationing out here. She's like, this is the good orange juice. You get two-thirds of a cup. You want four-fifths? No way. Go to your room. All right. And so this is the total cups. We'll call it C for cups that they all drank. Okay. And so what this will be, of course, is five times two thirds. And now you see why I said that this was pretty straightforward one. Um, and we can even, you know, do it up like we did the last few, you know, that five times two thirds. Five times two is 10 and we is talking about thirds. Now the question though, however, is how many cups of orange juice did they drink? 10 thirds isn't really a good answer. So we do want to convert that over to a mixed number. And a couple of ways we can do this. I, I like to do this in my head. Three, six, nine. Okay, so there are three three-thirds and ten-thirds. And so that's three. And that leaves one-third, which is the ten-third. If, if you're confused by what I just did, here's what I just did. I said, hey, there's nine-third. And decomposing the ten-thirds, nine-third and one-third. Nine-thirds is equal to three holes, right? And you can even draw a quick picture if you want to see that. So there's the three and one third. Three and one third cups. So they drank three and one third cups of OJ, baby. All right. And there you go. You've gone done again. You completed another homework time. Nice work to you and I both. I'll see you again next time. It is once again homework time.